The following podcast is a Dear Media production. How did we come up with Henry Rose? You know, it's hard to find a name. It's hard to find a name. And I kept thinking and reflecting on what feels organic and authentic to this brand. And I kept coming back to that is my kids. And so it's their middle names, you know, and it also reflected that it was a genderless brand, which was important. What is your Michelle Pfeiffer scent? I've historically been a one scent person. Like, I can eat the same food every day over and over again. What do you eat every day? I would eat Mexican food every day if, <laughs> if I, you know, if I didn't want to weigh 500 pounds. <laughs> I think it's hard for me to honestly find something I really love. And once I find it, I stick with it. It's like, okay, that's done. Check that box. But uh, this whole process, and so it was challenging because I had to get outside of that Um and I had because you learn. can't just have one scent. <laughs> well, funny enough, I thought I could. <laughs> so because you have on your site, it's called Find Your Scent, which right. we love because everybody, you know, you it's, go through these questions. But what is yours? It's actually shockingly accurate as well. I didn't know if it was possible to actually formulate one scent that could compete in the market in the in in the marketplace as a fine premium fragrance and that could meet the Environmental Working Group's health and safety criteria and get the verification. Um, I didn't know that it was possible because I hadn't smelled anything that could. And so Torn was the very first fragrance that we locked in. Through this process of the perfumers constantly saying to me, where does this take you? Tell us, does it take you to a place? I realized what I was trying to formulate was my father's cologne. Oh, I love my father's cologne. Mm. I didn't know that's what I was doing, and I didn't know that that was why I gravitated toward that particular category in fragrance is because it's very emotional, and you can always track track it back to a really pleasant experience in your life. Do you have a favorite note? I think my favorite note is vanilla. I'm a vanilla girl. What was your father's? My father's was Old Spice. I knew it. So that was what my dad wore. Yeah. I mean, all our dads wore Old Spice. I know. I love sandalwood. I love musky. I love almost a men's fragrance. Have you tried Torn? I just tried it. So this is the thing about Torn is as it dries down, the the warm vanilla starts to come more to the surface. And you, you get all of that sort of rich, warm, creamy vanilla it with does. a little bit of the wood when I lived my mom passed away three years ago I stole the perfume out in her bathroom before the Packers came and I I, I use just a tiny little bit every day of your mom's you know fragrance has such meaning to us both because it just it elicits so many memories and smells like Old Spice for my dad or Derisimo, Derisimo for my mom and for me I love fragrance but you know, we are both moms. We have six kids. You know, she has three girls. I have two boys and one daughter. And we do things differently about putting things in our body, mm-hmm. right? Because of the endocrine. Mm-hmm. We do, we think your message mm-hmm. with Henry Rose and, and the EWG and, and really trying to, to keep to those clean protocols, but also being fabulously chic and cool and you want it on your, your vanity, That that's... That's the win. It had to be in order for it to succeed because there's still that this this feeling, and, and partly because it's most of the time true, not always, is that if it's better for you, it's not it, it's not going to perform as well. We want our products to look good, but we also want them to not cause unnecessarily bodily harm. My father was diagnosed with cancer. My best friend was diagnosed with cancer. I sort of looked around and I'm like, wow, there's just, there's a lot of cancer. It just seems like there's more and more cancer. And, and, and then I started noticing that a lot of young children were being diagnosed with what were really more adult diseases and being put on what typically was sort of adult medications, like very strong medications. And I thought, and more and more, it was just like a lot. I thought, I know there are biological markers, and I know that genetics plays a big part of it, but there has to be something environmentally going on. And that was really what 
what inspired me. That was me. the impetus. That it was, was really the impetus. Yeah. yeah. We agree. We think that, you know, there has to be something. I mean, what Emish is going through, she has a six-year-old who's, you know, dealing with cancer. And what is happening at the moment? The body can process a certain amount of of toxins, but we're over. We're just overloaded. You know, we're being exposed at every turn. And and even speaking of fragrance, it's in almost everything. And it's not just the perfumes that you spray on. It's in your lotions. It's in your hair products. It's in all of your body care. It's in your laundry detergent. You know, they even put scent in paper. I mean, they put. I've had T-shirts where they've arrived scented, and you walk into an office building, and they're pumping it into the room. It's just we're being assaulted at every at every turn. And the thing about fragrance, when it comes to personal care and perfume, is you know, and actually, when, whenever fragrance is listed at all, it's just listed as one, listed as one word. And what most people don't understand, what I didn't understand when I went in when I started really diving into this was. That one word is really like a bucket full of ingredients that are are comprised of over 3,000 different unfederally regulated ingredients. 3,000? They pull from a palate and, and anything really, anything really that has a scent, gasoline, you know, anything that anything. has a smell can be listed in that bucket of fragrance. That's crazy. So that's the part where, I mean, you know, with my daughter specifically, I did everything organic and clean, I thought. Yeah. But, you know, for example, the detangling spray that I spent $20, you know, to buy this pump for children's detangling spray, apparently it's really toxic. And I had no idea. Yeah. And so I think, you know, unfortunately, to your point, but also fortunately you're doing this, is that there is so much out there that we don't know. And for me with fragrance, like the part that breaks my heart is, you know, it's something that you, you want to smell it, right? So mm -hmm. when you think about it, you're spraying it and you're like, it's constantly in your clothes, on your skin, on your bed sheets, like to think that you're spraying something that has such toxicity in it, mm -hmm. if you're not using a clean fragrance, which most aren't, that lingers everywhere.